Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The title of my sermon, You Can't Win Them All, but don't stop trying. The disciples were sent out and they said, if you're ever around someone who doesn't receive you, just knock the dust off your feet and go on to the next person. I've also thought of it being called Jesus' Compassion Help Wanted. That's what we should have on our church sign. The compassion of Christ, help wanted. Because Jesus looks out on the landscape of people that are coming before him. And they were probably wearing light colored robes. They looked like a bunch of wheat ready for the harvest. And he looked at them and he said, the harvest is plentiful. And then he said, these heart breaking words, but the workers are few. He looked out at the harvest and said, the harvest is plentiful. Every man, woman, and child of every race and every nation, every creed, all of these people are his children. They're the most important fruit that this earth produces. That's you and I, and that's them, and that's them, and them, and everyone around the world is equally important to God as our children so aptly identified. He loves us all equally. So how is it then that we get this gift of salvation? Now, I've been gone for two weeks and I come back and I get a text like this and it sounds like I'm gonna bruise you up with saying we gotta do more, we gotta do mission. But this is what the text is calling for. So this is for the congregation. If you're just visiting us today, I'm sorry, but you're along for the ride. This is not how I normally would. I'm not a hellfire preacher by any stretch of the imagination, but we have to recognize what's at stake. Because believe me, people of God, there will be a harvest. There'll be a harvest to light or there'll be a harvest to the darkness. Every single person born will die. I was Googling the mortality rate, and guess what it still is? It's 100%. (laughs) None of us get out of here alive. We're all going to die at some point, and then comes the judgment. And it's not that God's condemning us. Our separation from God and the sin that we're born into condemns us. God's not saying you are bad and you are good. He's saying that all of you are deserving of separation from me for eternity. But I've got an idea. I'm going to become a man. And I'm going to live under the law. And I'm going to keep the law perfectly because there's no way you could do it for a minute. And I'm going to pay your price on the cross. I'm going to die your death. I'm going to take your beating in my flesh. And I'm going to pay that price. I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit after the resurrection. And he's going to remind you of all the things that I've taught you. And I'm, the Holy Spirit's going to gather you into the completed work of Christ on the cross. And you're going to be saved. That's what God does for us. Some people say, well, Dave, gosh, you know, could God possibly... Could Jesus say, I am Buddha, I am Allah? Can, can God act some way that's not covered in Scripture? Can the Holy Spirit act in freedom and love however the Holy Spirit chooses? Maybe. I don't know. But I'm not going to take that chance. I know what it says in Scripture. And I believe Scripture is the Word of God. It's the basis of all of our faith and practice. And the Word of God says no one comes to, no, no one, no one comes to Christ, no one comes to God except through Jesus. That apart from Christ there is no salvation. We have this precious message. We have directions to the destination. I don't know if we have any hikers, backpackers. I know Dave rode his bicycle all the way across the country. But you ever get lost, don't you stop and and help people? Especially if you're hiking when you're driving down the freeway, you know, you, you, you don't want to pull off the side of the road and get creamed. So, you know, you... But you, you, if you have directions, you 
Share them with people. We have directions. And the scripture says here that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So many churches pray for more members. And God must be thinking, I prepared the harvest for you, knuckleheads. You got to bring them in. It'd be like a fisherman going out, sitting in a boat, saying, I'm not going to put the line out. I want the fish just to jump in my boat. I don't want to put out the nets. They should just come to me. Or better yet, just stay on the shore. Get your frying pan going. Get in the pan and skin yourself while you're at it, too. That's not the way it works, is it? God is calling. Carl Barth said that a church that is not in mission is no church. Can I get an amen? amen? Let me say it to you again. A church that's not in mission is no church. Can I get an amen? amen? We must be in mission. And the mission is to be a worker in the harvest field. And when we start praying for that, be careful. Be careful when you start praying for that because God's going to do all kinds of stuff in your life. He's going to use you. Did you notice in our text that as the disciples prayed that God would send him into the harvest field? Do you, do you know what the next thing is? He sent them out. They prayed for it, and they got to do it. So when we're a congregation praying for mission, guess what? We get to do it. And people of God, there's no plan B. God's got no other way of doing it except through you. God is counting on each and every one of us to take this precious gift of God. And you notice that every time in Scripture that it says Jesus had compassion, it's followed by an action. Amen? Amen. He doesn't just like have this warm, fuzzy feeling and then you know, forget about it and move on. It's like all the commercials you, you, know, you see on TV about starving children and you, your heart's moved, but then you go to the next TV station and forget about it. Jesus sees something, he has compassion. The Greek word means his insides boil, they, 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 they changed. And then he does something about it. And the compassion of Jesus Christ is always the center for all of our mission. It's not something that we do to, you know, to, to build up the barn, to, to make more sheaves stuck in here. It's about building the kingdom of God. It's about being obedient. And yes, you never know what someone's going to say, Ellie. You never know how someone's going to take it. They might reject it. They might make fun of us for it. But why do you think the apostles went through all the stuff that they did? Because they recognized how important it was that these people's eternity is hanging in the balance. It's like someone being sick and dying and you're holding this remedy and you're thinking, I don't want to offend them. What if they don't like that flavor? What, what, what if you know, your, 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 your remedy is, is vanilla and, and maybe they only like chocolate? You'd give them the remedy, right? And worry about it later. That's what we're called to do. We're, we're dealing with a sick world that is lost, and they've never been more set up now for the harvest than any time. Young people, older people, they're all lost and lo looking for something in their lives, and we're in the middle of it. Our population is increasing, and Christianity is not. What's wrong with this picture? The harvest is plenty. But the workers are few. Pray, therefore, for workers to go into the harvest field. How many of you have ever, ever seen the movie The Sixth Sense? Remember the story about this kid that has the sixth sense that can, that can see people that are dead that no one else can see? And there's a line in the movie where he says, I can see dead people. They're everywhere. Think about that in a spiritual sense. I go out, and I'm walking my dog in the park. I'm shopping at Wegmans or any other place, and I see all of these people, so many of them without Christ, and they're lost. They're lost. 
There's no chance for them apart from Christ. If we don't believe that, if we, if we really don't internalize that, if, if we don't completely accept it and let it absorb into our lives, then we're going to be terrible at mission because it won't matter. But it does matter because it's the truth the way God presents it to us in Scripture, that apart from Christ, we're lost. And there's a lot of people that are lost. They're lost. You know, I don't know if you've witnessed to someone and had them come around to believe it. It's the greatest feeling in the world. I want to share with you a line out of when I was a police officer. You know, like, like Greg is a, is a paramedic. You get opportunities to life save. And it's, it's a rewarding experience. And I've got several life saving awards. But there's a line in here that I, I want to share with you. It says, there's nothing as, this is from the chief of police in Imperial Beach. There's nothing as satisfying in this profession, indeed in this life, than the knowledge and the satisfaction it brings that you are responsible for the preservation of the life of another human being. There is something that's more valuable and rewarding. Let me tell you about a guy named Herb. When I was in St. Louis, I worked with Apple of Eye Ministry. It was a Jewish outreach. And we reached out to the Jewish community in St. Louis and we gave a class called the Alpha Bible Study. Probably many of you have experienced it. It's a great Bible study. And Herb had been going for about a year and a half while I was there, and he always showed up, but he just couldn't let go. And the one day that was that come to Jesus moment. We could see his countenance change. He started weeping. And he goes, I get it. Christ is my Savior. He is my Lord. And I tell you, at that moment, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can compare to the joy of connecting with another human being who has discovered the grace of God in Jesus Christ. And we might not always get those kind of responses because some of us are called to plant. Some are digging the soil, pulling the weeds. Some are watering and others are harvesting. But we need to be a part of that process. You know, there's a lot of terrible crimes that are committed out there in the world. There's murder, there's rape, there's robbery, there's terrorism. But people to God, there's a lot of crimes going on in our church too. It's people that are silent. Christians who come in here and would rather just sit in the sterile environment of the church than they would risk getting their feet dirty among the great unwashed populace. We're afraid of being rejected. We're afraid of someone not liking our message. We're afraid that someone might not care for us when their eternity is at stake. I don't usually get this hardcore. I don't have any jokes to tell you this time. But I wanted to share with you the last words of our hymn that we just sang. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. Verse 4. Let none hear you idly saying, there is nothing I can do. While the multitudes are dying and the master calls for you. Take the task he gives you gladly. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth. Here I am. Here am I. Send me. Send me. And may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.